Bingo, and it's Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. This is Global Connections, and we have a very special surprise show for you from, from Helsinki, Finland. That is on the other side of the planet. It's 12 time zones away. Um, and we have uh, uh, Laura Alto, uh, and uh, Alto means, uh, Laura, what does Alto mean again? It means wave. Wave as in ocean. And we have Alexander yes. P. P. Lainen. Did I get that right, Alexander? That's, okay, that was perfect. Okay, all right. And these guys are both associated with uh, CAAS. Now, you may have heard of SAAS, which is software as a service. This is a city as a service, okay? And it's a, it's a, I guess it's part of the city of Helsinki. And uh, Laura, you're the CEO, am I right? Yes. Okay, and Alexander. Of the city marketing company. Of the city marketing company, but that's either a contractor or part of the city government, yeah? It's part of the city city government, yes. And Alexander, you're in the marketing arm also? Uh, so uh, I'm behind the agency that was uh, collaborating with in, in this project. How did you guys get into these careers? Are you trained for this? You know, are you specialized? Uh, this is kind of an interesting job. I mean, and I want your job. I want both of your jobs, actually. <laughs> uh, well, I, I believe I have the best job in the world. I mean, this is a, this is a marvelous city to market, and, and this is a, making Helsinki visible around the world, like in Hawaii. It's, it's, it's the best job that I can imagine. Well, I was looking around for photographs of uh, Helsinki this morning, and uh, gee whiz, there are so many beautiful uh, photographs of the city, both uh, light and dark, both uh, morning and, and afternoon and, and evening. Um, it was really hard to pick one that depicts the, the beauty of the city. But it goes beyond that. You guys have decided right now, 2019 or maybe 2018, that you want to make Helsinki special for the world. You want to promote it and you want to, you want to brand it as the first city as a service. So, Laura, what is that? What is a city as a service? <laughs> well, simply put, we're there for people. I mean, we're there for the locals who live here, but also for the for the talent who wants to move to Helsinki, or for the visitors who want to visit Helsinki. Uh, and um, it's, I think, it's a mindset, an attitude, and it all comes um, like starts from the city strategy, how Helsinki sees it itself. Um, and as you know, in the in the Scandinavian countries, the uh, in the Nordic countries, the 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 cities and the governments they pay, they pay quite a. Uh, Kind of like they are responsible for a lot of services and and we do pay um, a lot more taxes than in the us but we also get a lot for that so we get the edu free education we get the free health care um, and uh, i think it's important that the cities consider themselves as being there for the people uh, so we do get a lot in return when we pay the taxes ah now you know in the us and in the law right a city or a county would be responsible for those basic infrastructure services and i will name them police fire water trash sewage uh, i guess that's that's really about it um and do you go further than that you provide services other than those basic infrastructure services alexander yes so uh i don't know if i got it correctly but in helsinki or in finland in general we have uh health and education and like the education system in Finland is, was well awarded uh, several times to be the best education system in the world. So that's at least like a one big, uh, major, major thing in addition to you know the basic infrastructure. Well, you know, Laura said something about how yes, you provide a lot of services, but you also have taxes that you know pay for the cost of those services. Um, uh, you know, we we have we have uh, services, um, um, but we have taxes. Uh, we. We pay taxes, but we don't have the services you have. And I'm wondering about the equation. How do you make that work? It sounds to me very efficient that even with the high taxes, you can provide all those services. Um, how do you make sure that a dollar or, well, what is it in Finland? Is it a euro in Finland? Euro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that a euro is getting what it's supposed to get. How do you keep efficient? How do you avoid corruption? How do you avoid waste? <laughs> well, uh, Finland is many times voted the least corrupted country in the world. Uh, and I think uh, not only Helsinki, but the whole country of Finland, it's very much built on trust. There's a social 
people trust each other, people trust government, people uh, trust the kindness of others. And um, since we are, um, we are a, uh, a nation that is rather small, so there is 5.5 uh, million people living in, in, um, in Finland and about 650,000 people living in Helsinki. So uh, because we are so few, we need, it, we need each other. Ah, uh, an old notion here on ThinkTech, caring for each other. And it sounds yeah. like that's what you're that's nice. what you're touching into. And by the way, um, you know, Hawaii has a population of 1.2 million, and the uh, the population of, of Honolulu is something uh, over 900,000. So we are we are one fifth the size of, of of Finland in general, and our city is just a little bigger actually by a third uh, yeah. than Helsinki. That's so interesting to make that comparison. Uh, so you also yeah. are trying to attract people. It's more than just providing, as you said, Laura, for the residents. Mm. You're trying to attract people from all over the place. And I guess that includes, um, you know, Europe, all through the EU. Um, I suppose it includes the U.S. Actually, this sounds very appealing to me. And after the show, I want to get some application papers from you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in any event, who are you trying to attract? Is it, is it only, you know, skilled science uh, technology workers? Is it everybody? Uh, how do you choose? What do you want to do? Um, so well, if I, if I start very shortly and then Alexander can continue. Um, uh, may I ask in the beginning, what was your first mobile phone or cell phone that you ever had? Was it a Nokia phone? Yes, it was, now that you say that. And that, yes. that's from Scandinavia, that's, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's Finnish, that's as a matter of fact. I know two though. things from Finland. One is one is Nokia and the other is Fratzilla. Okay. Oh, both right. <laughs> well, anyways, because of the uh, so-called Nokia legacy, we have a very strong um, technology technology background here. There's a lot of knowledge around uh, technology and that um, when Nokia uh, Nokia did some things wrong and wasn't that major company anymore. So there was a lot of knowledge here and a lot of that that caused uh, kind of like a startup boom in, in, in Finland. So there's a lot of uh, uh, very fast growing companies that need ICT talent a lot. And that's why we've been working on this uh, talent attraction lately a lot. And maybe, mm -hmm. Alexander, you can add something on this as well. Yeah, so for, and, and like the first, kind of like after Nokia uh, or Nokia's uh, company declined a bit, uh, the problem in, 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 in Finland was uh, the lack of access to international venture capital, but not anymore. So that was like 10, 10 uh, eight years ago, uh, but now, I think it was a few weeks back when it was announced that uh, Finland actually attracts the most venture capital per GDP. Uh, so the Finnish companies are getting venture capital, but the bottleneck has changed to uh, well, global competition on the tech talent. And the biggest bottleneck for those companies is now uh, how, do, how do they recruit talent and where do they get the best people to come so that they can grow. And the cities can play a huge role in this to support the recruiting of the companies because uh, kind of like their reputation has a massive impact on the individuals or their families' the decision to relocate. And that's kind of like how we first uh, started the discussion on this project, uh, City as a Service, uh, where we're discussing quite randomly actually with one of the companies from Finland, which is like very, very fast growing. And they said that this is a, like, this is a big problem for them. So the people have a, have a, like a wrong idea of what Helsinki is and we should do something about it, not alone, but together with the city and with other tech companies. And that's kind of like how the discussion started of this uh, new collaboration project. That's admirable and, and lovely. Um, it's, it's so mm, optimistic and mm, good natured and everything. Um, now, if, if somebody comes, if somebody comes from, say, Europe, I mean, uh, continental Europe, well, you are continental, somebody comes from the southern part of Europe, um, and they have some skill in technology, um, are you going to be able to provide for them all those benefits you talked about, Laura, uh, right, right on arrival? I mean, for example, in, in Singapore, if Singapore needs population, needs talent, uh, they just order a million people from China, and, and the million people are there the next day. And they have housing and all the benefits you could possibly have. They can make a life instantly. Um, is that possible in Finland? Is it possible in Helsinki? 
Well, if we're talking about CD as a service, <laughs> we certainly can. Well, but to be honest with, um, uh, as Alexander's mentioned, there's a huge need for, IC, especially for ICT talent. Uh, and at the moment, we're targeting a lot, for instance, to uh, Eastern European countries, where there's a lot, there's a very a high quality on uh, education, especially on technology education. Um, and um, uh, uh, and Russia is very close by, so it's three hours by train from Helsinki, it's St. Petersburg, so it's uh, so close by. So, so really, no, we're not looking for um, whoever to move to Helsinki, but especially uh, with a, cert a certain background and with the ICT talent that can be, uh, that the companies in the, in the Helsinki area need at the moment. And another point here is that actually, um, uh, what what Alexander was mentioning earlier that Helsinki uh, lacks a lot uh, the international awareness. So we are we consider ourselves a bit like underdog between among the uh, the other, uh, other Nordic capitals. So Stockholm and Copenhagen have been booming a lot more um, in the recent years, and Helsinki has been like a bit overshadowed by its Nordic neighbors. Uh, and I think this position of an underdog gives us uh, a huge kind of um, benefit yes. when uh, putting together the, 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 the marketing and the kind of like taking which p position we are taking in our, um, in our marketing and branding ac activities. So we kind of like we play around a bit. We can, can take a bit more risks and that's always a wonderful position for, um, for a marketer. <laughs> that's a great, um, great way to look at it, yeah. So uh, did you go out, do you go out to, um, you know, Southern Europe, do you go out to Eastern Europe, do you go out to, I don't know, France, do you go out to the UK, uh, are, you, are you reaching out, are you, are you putting ads out there, you have agents who recruit for you, uh, how do you do that? Alexander? So, um, so now, well, well, now the campaign is, is already over, um, so, so we got applicants from over 100 cities uh, from, from the US. From uh, from Europe, from Africa, from Asia, so so basically all over the world, and uh, the kind of like the main channel for this was well online, as this is as this is something uh, for the tech professionals, and uh, I, I have to say that it was surprisingly uh, good campaign in 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 that sense that we didn't need to um, do that that much of um, of like. A, or, or like we didn't need to push that hard because the concept itself was it was rather creative because when you look at the like how other cities are doing these kind of campaigns they're quite they're quite similar so they lack humor or they're very generic and like laura mentioned helsinki had this like unique angle to it so it was like something very very new it was something refreshing and uh, it had humor in it so uh, like how we got how the campaign got so good results was actually by or like by the shares from the uh, from the global tech community, so people uh, found it from different online forums, and they just share it kind of like organically with uh, with their own community. So that's kind of how we how we reached then uh, the best people that we kind of wish to reach as well. So that was like the the ideal case for us. So we didn't need to uh, push that hard, but like. We trusted that the idea itself is good enough and it will get people talk about it and, well, share it. Laura, do you have to uh, market this in Helsinki itself and in Finland? Because, you know, on the one hand, you have a, an ethic that cares about people, uh, a pride, a pride in the city and all that. But, you know, if this was happening in the U.S., there'd be a certain number of people in, in Helsinki and Finland who would be behind it. They would see it as positive. And there'd be a certain number of people who would say, oh, are you spending all that money? Is there really a return on that? Um, and they would, be, they would be in opposition, you know, in a democratic society, right? Um, do you have to sell this in Helsinki, in Finland? <laughs> uh, do you have any resistance over spending the money and, and taking the risk? Well, of course, there's always some resistance and, mm -hmm. and that is always good to question. But I think we've been more systematically working on the city marketing and city branding for the past four years, so to say. Um, and I would say um, the uh, it, the kind of like approach people have to, um, or the pride they have to their own city has changed during those years. So people kind of like, it's kind of like feel a, a very much more stronger pride and, and, and commitment to their own community and own city. And also not only asking 
like what the city can do for them, but also kind of like being part of the um, the urban movement and being part of making the city a better place to live in. And and we like to think uh, city as a um, a platform to um, for the community to work together. So Helsinki. Um, whether it's uh, towards the um, towards the local community, whether, whether it's towards the visitors or the talent who comes, or whether it's towards the the, the business community, we like to think of Helsinki as a platform to to for different people to come together and work together. Um, and uh, um, it's Helsinki is a rather small city, as I mentioned. So it's it's um, and it's a well functioning city. So and there's a lot that there's a very good uh, technology background, as I mentioned. So it's an it's a good opportunity for companies to try out in Helsinki certain things that they can scale up in somewhere else. Uh, and uh, and this is kind of like I would call it a can do attitude or the kind of like approach of uh, being an active citizen is something that Helsinki is very strongly promoting, not only for the ones who live here, but also for the uh, for the ones who want to come to Helsinki. That is so reminiscent of John F. Kennedy at his inauguration uh, oh. <laughs> back in the 60s, where he yeah. said, ask not yeah. uh, what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for yeah. your country. <laughs> But well, we're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so you have, you know, I mean, I, I told you before the show that I've never met a Helsinki person I didn't like. And uh, Helsinki <laughs> people are very friendly, and I've always enjoyed that. You, you know, it's, it's, it's predictable even. Um, but, you know, you have that, you have the, the notion of caring, the notion of pride, the notion of this branding that is actually taking root over four years. Uh, you know, what, mm -hmm. about, what about, you know, being copied? Uh, as they say in the in the patent business, being knocked off. I mean, what, you know, Copenhagen, successful, a lot of resources. Why don't they knock you off? And why don't they do the same things you're doing and try to achieve the same branding? <laughs> Pull the rug out from under you. Are you having that experience? <laughs> what do you think, Alex? Well, I, I think uh, during the past few years, Helsinki's kind of pays of coming up with new, very, very interesting things to promote and like to build their brand has been so fast so it's it's hard to catch up so i'd say to copenhagen or to stockholm that bring it on <laughs> it's funny is it <laughs> what it nice means way. is if you're going to brand yourself as a special place as a city you know as a service um you've got to keep ahead you've got to you've got to keep pushing you always got to come up with new yeah. ideas not only in uh, you know the branding but in the in the reality and in, in, in how it goes every day and making life good yeah. for the people who arrive and who are the people you're recruiting. So uh, one of the exactly. things I want to go ahead. Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, I think it's a continuous dialogue between the locals and the visitors mm -hmm. and the the residents, the communities, and the city. So so for us, um, I think during the past four or five years, we've been what we've been working a lot on is the dialogue with the different stakeholders. So that, so that no, it's not the closed city hall that doesn't communicate to the outside community, yeah. but very much having the understanding that what people are actually expecting and what they are, what they wanting from the, um, uh, from the, uh, from the government and also really building the trust, uh, as I mentioned before. Uh, the trust, lest we forget, very important, trusting and caring. So um, at the risk of revealing what you have in mind for the future, as you, as you evolve down this path, in this uh, fabulous initiative you've made, um, can you tell me, um, you, you know, what, what, what you have in mind, where you're going with all this, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and if you feel that you don't want to say anything in front of uh, Copenhagen or Stockholm, you, you know, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> oh, well, I think, I think there's, uh, there's room for all kinds of cities. <clears throat> and but um and and uh i think it's definitely it, it's it's a city's um it's the era of cities so the nation states are are can i say becoming a bit old fashioned or or people people identify themselves with cities and, and local like local identities um and uh it's definitely i, I strongly believe so that um Helsinki should not be the only city city as a service, but there's a huge need for other cities to kind of like have it have this dialogue type of approach um, to its stakeholders and communities and and to its people. So uh, really, bring it on. <laughs> We're happy to share what we what we've learned on, on, in our path. 
Well, you speak of a very interesting concept. Now, that is the concept that the emergence or reemergence of the city <clears throat> is a place to coalesce, is a place to be proud of, is a place to focus on, and, uh, you know, sort of the, it's, it's a local concept, um, but it's, it, we lost it somewhere in the 20th century, I think, and now you're demonstrating that it is important it, and it can be and should be and is being regained. Am I right? Yes, I, I believe it. I, I believe very strongly the, the way you describe it, I, and I think that. Um, and it's also, if you look at the, the way how the visitors' industry, tourism, is changing very, very rapidly. Um, and so, uh, in the past years, it was okay to go to go around the world and see things, and now people want to experience things. They want to do things. So it's not enough only to kind of like, well, I went to Paris and. I saw Eiffel Tower, but you really want to be part of the local community. Uh, and uh, for Helsinki, one of the uh, uh, one of the key things is that we uh, we want to be. I always say we want to be more Helsinki, not less Helsinki. So we want to be as authentic as we can. And the city as a service campaign is definitely one of the uh, one of our ways of being. You know, really showing how we are and <laughs> and what's our approach to. Um, to to the local community and also to the ones who come here. What a, what a lovely thing. So um, I just wonder, uh, Alexander, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, these points of success. And I wonder if there has been a, um, a notable, um, measurable success in the, so call it the gross city product of Helsinki. Has this, you said, four years is going on now. Um, have you been able to identify a trend in the way the economy works, and can you link that uh, with cities, uh, city as a service? Sorry, could you repeat the question again? Yeah, I mean, what effect has this had on your economy? After all, it's uh, it, it is intended, at least in part, to uh, to bolster, improve, you know, vitalize your economy. So I think I think one one maybe like a very very interesting data point to to give uh, from the past from the past. Uh, decade, like Laura mentioned, um, like we we have a lot of tech talent, and uh, if we go back ten years from now, um, becoming an entrepreneur was not a career path for for too many. And actually, one percent of youth uh, considered themselves or considered entrepreneurship as a career option, and now that number is fifty percent. So I think there has happened like a very, very tremendous jump uh, for like in the mindsets uh, of, of young people and also the older generation uh, towards more positive attitude towards uh, entrepreneurship and technology. Uh, and I think that has led uh, this like very, very big boost uh, in the Finnish economy that there has been more and more very interesting companies uh, born in Helsinki and also in other cities of Finland, uh, and like nowadays, the like the fin Finnish Finnish like startup ecosystem represents one of the kind of like globally leading startup ecosystem. Actually, so ah, I think yeah. that has been quite, quite dramatic change. Is it part, Alexander? Is it part of this the bell curve? You know the uh, the demographic bell curve of youth and and uh, and age. Um, in, in, uh, we, I, there was a piece on television here in Honolulu a day or two ago about Italy and about how no babies were born, virtually no babies were born in large parts of Italy. And so the, you know, the, the demographic was going upside down, um, which has mm. a big effect on your economy. Is part of this initiative that you guys are working on an idea to bring young people to Finland because you need them? Mm. I'd say probably probably um, that can be like a one of the root causes why why something like this uh, has happened or like what a, uh, un the positive attitude towards entrepreneurship has happened already or started to grow already ten years ago. Um, that was one thing, but also also the fact that new companies bring quite a lot of the new jobs, uh, and I think it was uh, I would ch still have to check like what was the uh, precise percentage. Uh, of, of new jobs created back then. Uh, but that was like one of the main reasons why Finland wanted to bring more um, startup companies that are growing growing from uh, from Finnish, mm -hmm. Finnish economy. Mm -hmm. Laura, um, you know, would you add anything to that? And, and by the way, is Vartsila in Helsinki? Is this part of your economy? Because I had some experience yeah, yeah, with our Vartsila yeah. is world, world known 
as one of the you know top shipyard builders, uh, yeah. ship, shipping ship builders in the, yeah. in the world. Yeah. So is, is that yeah. part of what you're doing? Yeah, we actually cooperate with them. Yes, I mean this is um, <laughs> uh, as I mentioned, this is a small city and a, a quite small country. So we, um, I used to say that everybody's within the reach of one or or two phone calls. <laughs> so uh, I do have friends working there, and uh, and I knew and I know know people working for the wonderful company. Yeah. So you think Nokia is coming back? Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> yeah, they, they're str very strong in networks at the moment. And uh, um, good, good. Well, I have one. I have one last question for you guys, and it's uh, you know I mentioned before the show that if you if you walked around in Honolulu and you said uh, you see a city as a service as a as a concept, you see this you know trust initiative, uh, this caring for each other initiative, this this pride in the city. You see that here, and I would say most people would say no, we don't. No, we don't. We have too many problems, uh, and and there's there's no community will, if you will. Uh, to improve it, to be proud of it, and so forth. And I, I would I would guess that a lot of cities in the United States are just like that. They're blighted or, you know, they're just lack, lack of energy, so to speak. Um, and so the question is, um, can you actually deliver, um, uh, propagate what you do to other cities? Do you think <laughs> other cities will pick it up, like in the U.S.? And, and you think this is the, you know, the uh, the trend uh, and that maybe they'll say, oh, gee, uh, Helsinki, what a great city. We ought to do the same thing. And can you travel around and talk about that, you guys? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. We want to kind of like start a global movement. <laughs> of, you know, but, but honestly, for uh, for the governments, the city governments, I think it's really important to think about people because cities exist for people. They don't exist for the uh, for the government, or they don't exist for the uh, uh, for the administration itself. But they exist for people. So the the one and only thing that it that it actually should care about is that um, how pe how people see them and how 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 they can serve people. So I, I believe each and every city should be a city a city of service. <laughs> so what are your closing thoughts? Your advice to us in a city which may not have the the same view, the same uh, advantages that you have in this program. What would you tell us? Speak to the people of Honolulu now. Uh, uh, <laughs> Alexander, you first. <laughs> okay, I'd, I'd say that this is a, that, that's a, that's a false statement that you don't have the same advantages. I mean, like just look outside here. Uh, <laughs> I'd say that our kind of like a starting point was a bit tougher than to get people to uh, Honolulu or to Hawaii, if you like. This is the shittiest weather <laughs> in, in the world right now. So you just have to play what you have. <laughs> Laura, what do you think? Uh, well, I agree with Alex. I, I, th I think um, uh, each and every city should be more like themselves. They should be more authentic uh, and uh, and really to kind of like understand what's the core values of the that particular city uh, and people are excited about authenticity so uh, it's not anymore the touristic uh, you know attractions that co co get your attention but you really need to be more you um, and this is what makes people curious ah what a lovely what a lovely thought well i hope you guys will find a way to get over here and talk to us and i can <laughs> guarantee you that if you can make it i will set up groups that would like to hear everything you have to say <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Laura, Alexander, you guys are great. How do you, how do you say farewell in Finnish? Oh, oh, Finnish is a tough language, uh, but you say nakamine. Okay, nakami, nakami. Yeah. <laughs> Aloha, we say. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye-bye. Great to talk bye -bye. to you. Bye-bye. You too, bye-bye. <laughs>